today we continue our conversation that we started yesterday and we look at maybe some of the false ideas about work and there's extremes to everything. Sometimes people think we should give up work altogether. And um, while we recognize that living a life surrendered to Jesus is incredibly important, it can't overtake our responsibilities of taking care of our finances, our families, and all those kinds of things. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that today. Stay tuned. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what He says in His Word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach. And I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with Him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand His will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, before we get into today's episode, I have a quick word. I know you've been frustrated with being confident in how to tell the difference between hearing from God and wondering if it's your own voice. Listen, I know, I've been there myself. That's why I wrote the Bible study, She Hears, Learning to Listen to Jesus. This is a six-week study that takes you through the book of John, looking at six women in the life of Jesus. It also teaches the color method of Bible study, which helps you to learn how to really understand the scriptures. I include lots of cultural and historical information, and it really makes these familiar passages of scripture just come alive. This is a great study to do on your own, to do with some girlfriends or even some teenage girls, and it will help you really gain the confidence in how to hear from the Lord and set you up with some tools that will stay with you long after the study is over. You can find that on my resources page at shehears.org. And for a limited time, I'm offering all of my podcast listeners a special discount of 20% off. You can use the discount code hearing Jesus that's one word all caps to get your discount there are also some free videos and a leader's guide for you to get started again head to shehears.org and you can find the bible study on the resources page hey friends welcome back to the hearing Jesus podcast I'm your host Rachel Grohl you know some people think we should give up working all together especially now in the climate we're in and we should just give up all of our spare time and we should be going walking door to door uh, like some of the other faiths do, and just uh, telling people about Jesus. Is that the, is that the truth of it? Probably not. Um, do you know, I'm an advocate, a huge advocate of uh, in-person public ministry. I mean, we, we did Sidewalk Sunday School for years. I'm an advocate of that. But does that mean I didn't have a responsibility and didn't have a calling and didn't have another job and, you know, ignore my kids or any of that? No, there has to be a balance. But the balance comes when we're seeking God first. I think there is this benefit to seeking first the kingdom. And a lot of times what happens is when we seek first the kingdom, that inward anxiety that we tend to have falls away. And so the inward reality of simplicity becomes this life of really joy and unconcern for possessions. And um, either the greedy people or the super, uh, I don't know how, how you would say that, the super stingy people uh, or super frugal people, neither one of them are going to be living in this place of joy. And so it really has nothing to do with um, an abundance of possessions or lack of possessions. It's this inward spirit of trust where we are trusting the Father to provide for us in a way that we are not bent towards working towards it ourselves um, to the point of of disobedience. And so, um, you know, we are living with no guarantee at all. And, And I think we tend to put so much stock in our finances that we forget that we have a God 
that is our provider. And we've seen that over and over again throughout scripture. Um, Paul taught that the love of money is the root of all evil. And a lot of times you'll see that the people that love money the most, they have the least love. And, and I say that because we have a first up close view of wealth in America TikTok and uh, social media and YouTube and all those things, um, a lot of those stars end up in rehab, suicidal, all, all addiction, all sorts of things because they might have all the finances that they want, but there's no joy on the inside. You know, we probably, I don't know, 10 years ago or so, one of my first trips to, uh, to I think it was Kenya, I was getting ready to leave actually. And I don't know if you guys have seen them, but they're, they, this grocery store sells these lollipops that have like a button on the side and it's for, you know, so kids can be lazy where it turns the lollipop for you. So you just put it in your mouth and it turns the lollipop for you. Just press this little button. Um, but sometimes they're fun. They have like, you know, light up stuff or fairies or, or whatever. So I was cleaning out my car, getting ready to go and put the luggage and stuff in there. And when I did that, one of those was in the back seat of my van. And I just kind of, you know, chucked it in the garbage, didn't think another thing about it. Then um, fast forward to a week and a half, two weeks later, and I'm in this uh, impoverished village in the middle of uh, Kenya. And we had an opportunity to go and speak at different churches. And when they, the, the church pastors came, I said, you know, I'd like to go to whatever church has the largest children's ministry in my Western brain thinking children's ministry. I had brought, you know, my bag of tricks and, uh, (laughs) didn't even know what I didn't know. And so we arrive to this church and, um, there's a roof and there's three walls. There's no fourth wall. And it's just an open little, you know, hut. And there's a chicken walking in and out of it. And there's a bunch of kids in there. And there's one older grandma. She's in her 80s. And the rest are all just kids. And then the pastor says, okay, here's our church. And I I just kind of looked at him. I said, oh, well, this is kids church. And he said, yeah. And I said, well, where are the adults? Are they in like a different house? And he's like, no, there are no adults. And I just, I didn't understand at first. I, and here in that region, because of the AIDS crisis and because of war, there were very, there was several generations that had died out. And so the younger generation um, had really just rampantly been infected by HIV and AIDS. And so, um, you know, a lot of the husbands and their wives, multiple wives, they had passed away from, from sickness. And then the generation above them, a lot of the men, um, had been killed in war. So what it left was great grandparents that were raising children. And because polygamy is a thing there, you would have, and, and large families are a thing there, each wife might have six or eight kids. And so what we had was this great grandma who was raising, it was over 18 kids, and this was their church. And I looked down, and um, there was a baby who was crawling kind of along the side, and I went over and I picked the baby up, and I said, whose baby is this? Like, where did this baby come from? And one of the kids said, oh, he lives there. And I said, what do you mean? And he pointed to this bush. And he said, he, he lives, he lives there in that bush. And I'm like, I, I like, I had no frame of reference for this. Like I had no, no concept of in my Western experienced brain, what, what poverty was. And so there's literally a baby that lives in a bush outside of the, this church, if you could call it that. And they said, okay, well, you know, it's time for you to preach. And I, I can't even tell you the brokenness that I felt that day. And so I try to muster through my poorly planned, you know, 
lesson, and it was planned well for American kids, but it was not relevant to what we were seeing and experiencing. And just in desperation, um, we we did some worship together, and in desperation, I said, "Okay, Lord, I, I get it, I, I get it now." And I look over, and so I start sharing um, just a little bit about the concept of a name and how. God had called you by name. And so I was teaching in, on that. And I look over and on the bench, uh, one of the kids had one of those little lollipop handles. And of course the lollipop's long gone and the batteries are dead. But they're playing with the button because the button makes like a little clicking sound. And they would take turns sharing it. And so one would play with it for a little bit and then they would pass it on. Another would play with it for a little bit. And this was their toy. It was like one of their only toys, if not their only toy. And they were sharing it amongst 18 kids. And I cannot even tell you how much I was humbled that day. And we were sitting, I was sitting down and there was another gentleman with me and he was, he was sharing. And as he was sharing, um, this grandmother came up and she laid down her two coins on the table and it was her offering and a Dasani water bottle, which probably cost a ton there. Um, but they knew that the Americans had to drink bottled water. So they had a bottle of water and some coins that they laid there. And, man, my heart broke. I know lots of Americans that don't tithe. I myself in the past have been guilty of not tithing. And it broke me. And so um, after that trip, when I came back, had a whole different perspective on simplicity because what I witnessed in that three walled hut in the middle of Africa was a people that were filled with joy, the dancing and the singing and the laughter and the joy I experienced that day. It's been unmeasurable in anything I've experienced in my life since. And the simplicity with which they lived was, I believe, a direct link to the joy that they experienced because there was no barriers. There was nothing in between them and their relationship with God. There was none of this consumerism and none of this chasing after whatever. It was them depending on God to meet their needs and then rejoicing when he did. Father God, thank you so much for the joy that comes when we are seeking first the kingdom. Lord God, help that become a reality in our lives, that it's not just something we say, it's not something we just say we believe, but it's something that is really a guiding principle of our hearts, of our minds, of our behavior, of our spirit. Lord God, help us as we seek first the kingdom to then also be obedient to the things that you're calling us to do. Lord God, I thank you that um, when we live in such a way that the joy that becomes our reality is not dependent on our situation, our financial situations, our circumstances, but God, that joy comes as a result of being a daughter or son of God. Lord, I pray for that to become the reality in the lives of my friends today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call on your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His.